everybody. Welcome back to Niche Sports. It's uh, me, Jordan. I'm here with uh, Dan Kelly, back for this week's Super League and uh, the rest of this rugby league this weekend's results and uh, next weekend's preview. Um, we'll start then with uh, the Super League on Thursday night, St Helens versus Warrington. That finished 28-6. Uh, a bit of a shock result there, I'd say. I, th- I think, yeah, I think the scoreline was a shock. Um but everyone expected Warrington to bounce back, didn't they, after Wigan? Yeah. Um, I but I think did Daryl Powell hit the nail on the head. He said did, there were those three games, Catalans, Wigan and St. Helens, were going to tell them where they're at. And they're not nowhere near what they need to be. I mean, yeah. I, I feel for Warrington fans sometimes because they're always third best or fourth best when the leads when leads were on top to to you know to the bigger sides. Yeah. They've always just been the outside. I mean loads of challenge cups and all that but we all know what they want it's always their year isn't it we talked yeah. about this the other week uh yeah 28 6 i didn't i didn't i didn't really see that coming to be honest i thought it'd be a lot closer i thought maybe maybe saints would i thought warrington would definitely bounce back and at least make it a very close game i thought saints might maybe maybe get the win because you know they've got to start turning results around as well um they're still quite far off it but I did not expect anywhere near that. And obviously, I think Warrington still have a few players out. The Paul Vaughan, I think, missed the Saints game. A few players like that to come back, but we're still they're going to have to improve quite a bit to get the results against the, the sides that we really need to. Of course, the, te- the teams in and around, and that's where <clears throat> it's four-point games, aren't they? The teams yeah. in, in and around, especially especially now that the second, they're not top anymore. So, and the, yeah. like you said, the missing players, but also Josh Maguire coming back into the side. Do you think it's unbalanced it a little bit? They've changed the winning formula there, aren't they? I know, obviously, it's Josh Maguire. He's, he's, he's a legend in the game, basically. But did they really need to bring him in at this time? I mean, I know, obviously, it was big games, but it, I think he might have unbalanced the side a little bit. Yeah, I think I think it's always if you, if you've got a working team, why why change it? But um, yeah, he's he's obviously a great player, but maybe it's going to take that little bit of time to gel because obviously he got banned in pre-season, didn't didn't get much time straight away immediately. Uh, I imagine by now he's, he's been training quite well, knows everyone, but to actually get that match fitness, that sharpness, is going to take a bit of time. And I will say, yeah, that's probably disrupted him, disrupted him a little bit for sure. Uh, on to Friday now. We had well three games. Didn't we? One Challenge Cup game, two Super League games. Yeah. Castle, Castleford seven, Hull KR twelve. I remember thinking when Castleford took the drop goal and thinking, why, why, why so yeah. early into the game and why the score is still low. KR are mega dangerous. I, 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 yeah, there was no explanation yeah, for that. Just, really, was there? It just it seemed like. It seemed, it seemed like they just wanted to make a bit of a weird scoreline because I think, yes, Hull KR probably weren't at their best on Friday. I think that's uh, that's quite fair to say. You know, they still looked dangerous throughout that whole game. We're just that one one pass away from you know getting that try line. And as soon as as soon as they clicked in that second half, Casford were were nowhere near. Especially in that last twenty, every time Casford got the ball, it didn't look close. And every time Hull KR got the ball, they, look, they looked like they were going to score again. So. Yeah. To, it didn't seem smart. We talked about the game management in Huddersfield versus Leeds a few weeks ago, and it seems similar again. Casper didn't really know what to do in that in that position. Yeah, I agree with that. Lee versus Lee, that, that that's a big scout for Lee over Leeds. Yeah, 20, 20 points to six. I've just watched the Super League show before. They, they hammered them, didn't they? Really? Le, le, yeah. Le, 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 Leeds were in the game for for sorts, but they hammered them really. Just fair play to Lee. Fair yeah, play. They've, they have really bounced back since uh, they got beat off Wigan, was it, or Salford? One of them. Can't remember. I think, that. Yeah, um, I think I think that's Lee. You're obviously doing well. Best best promotion side um, in a very long time for sure. But mm. I think Leeds. It just proves that they're still inconsistent. The the win. It depends what mm. team turns up, doesn't it? Because every so often they turn up brilliant. Then the next week they turn up really poor. Like Huddersfield, Huddersfield and Hull looking really good, really, really smart. And then turn up again. And then they go to Lee and it's, it's nothing. But um, same time, I think Lee's atmosphere has got to be credited. And that's, that's probably again down to Derek Beaumont for all the work he's done around changing the match day experience. And I think that is quite, quite a difficult atmosphere for other teams to go to now. Yeah, I think the, I think the culture is coming along nicely. I mean, his own lads there. He's one of the best players at the minute. Um, Charnley's on fire. 
Um, yeah. Even even the big boys in the in the pack. Um, yeah, they're on fire at the minute, left, right, and centre. Um, like you said, leads the shot. Shot for answers sometimes. I think yeah. the, I think he doesn't know his best third starting thirteen yet. And I think with Cruz Leeming going, I think that's it's a big hole to it's a big hole to fill. No matter Definitely. what anybody, no, no matter what, what anybody says from the outside, that is a massive hole to fill. Yeah, especially with Brad Dwyer going because he was sort mm, of played second Brad, fiddle. Yeah, yeah, you're right there. Yeah, yeah, I think it's all all change. I don't think they expected Cruz to go because I think if if they did have an idea that it was you know maybe going to leave, it would have kept Brad Dwyer. And although Jared O'Connor's, you know, he's quite quite a good young player, he's not really ready to take that number nine spot permanently yet. I think that may be a bit costly for Leeds. Yeah, um, they, they, yeah, they wasn't equipped for him leaving. Leaving was they? Um, no. The next the next game on Friday was York and Newcastle. I've only caught a glimpse of it, but. Um, that was also a spot for the semi-final of the 1895 Cup, weren't it? Yeah. Um, um, and yeah, four points. Did you catch any of the game? Um, I was following it. I didn't didn't watch it, but I was I was following it, and uh, it seemed like Newcastle did quite well, to be honest. And I think that was not not so much a shock because obviously Newcastle are dangerous. We've got the Hull FC, um, the few Hull FC lads, but. Um, I think for them to go pretty much toe to toe with York until the very end is quite impressive, considering York are stab not maybe not established, but you know, a more they've got more experience of these sort of games. So I think Newcastle, although the loss, should be proud of that one. But yeah, it seemed seemed like a very close and tight game, which is obviously what we want in the cup. And um, the only game on the Saturday which you was at Halifax, Halifax. versus Bradford. What made you yeah. choose that one? Um. Firstly, fairly local, but um, also yeah, thought, yeah. thought uh, it's a bit of a local derby, in it? Halifax Bradford, and uh, last time I played, it was a very, very close game, twenty six, twenty two, I think it was, to uh, to Bradford, and I thought this time, look at looking at the results a week before, Halifax winning, Bradford losing, Bradford should probably beat in Batley considering their position and uh, start of this season. I thought. You know that'll be a that'll be a really tight, really good game. And obviously, it didn't turn out to be that way. Twenty six nil to Halifax, but I think it, I think that's credit to Halifax. You know, Louis Jouffre. I've I've read about him. I've seen a bit about him, but that he was incredible. I think he could genuinely walk into quite a few Super League sides if he play. If that wasn't a one off, obviously I don't go to Halifax a lot. But if he plays like that every week, he could be a Super League player for sure. Was he the lad that was at Whitehaven, Jouffre? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. thought he was. Yeah, he was shit hot then when I was when I went down with Swinton. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree with that. I share the same sen- sentiment, Sir Jordan. The boy is on fire. I mean, in your match day vlog, uh, it looked like he was going to uh, have a quiet minute after he pumped the try, and then it went again and again and again. They sort of yeah. just. I think I, I think the majority of it come in the first half, didn't it? And then did it get a bit more competitive? I've not actually seen the game. I've just seen the, the tries. So did it get a bit more competitive? Because they they they, 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 they didn't rally, did they? they, they, they the score think, remained relatively low. I think as I think I said it in the match of well, Bradford were never really fully out of a game, um, mm. especially in that second half. They they were just as good as Halifax, but by that point the game was done, and there was a few there was a few little turning points, such as Bradford. There was a one time where they, were, where they were pretty much on the try line, passed it out to a winger, should have been an easy touchdown, he knocks it on. And that was Ooh. that was with about 25 minutes to go. And at that point, we could have still got back in it, potentially. But it was little turning points like that, which is just gave Halifax complete control. And I think Bradford were unlucky not to score because there were, there were definitely many, many chances for them. But Halifax took the chances, and as I say, Jouffre and um, I think it was I think Jake Meisen was another one of the scorers. They them two just they, they had it all and uh, put Bradford to the sword. Yeah, he's a bona fide um, championship coach, isn't he? Simon Griggs. He's got his brother yeah. there as well. Um, after he retired, um, they'll they'll always be there or thereabouts in the league table. And they've had some yeah. good cup. They've had some good cup runs, haven't they? Was it was the semi final? A few seasons ago against Saints. Yeah. Who, who did they draw today? I remember seeing the draw, but I can't remember. Uh, Saints again. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. oh, brilliant. Oh, brilliant. Oh, and a home tie for him. That's good. Yeah. Be, That's, good. That's nice. I think, I think it's, it's a free hit for them, really, isn't it? No one's going to expect yeah. them to beat Saints, but the, the, who knows? Who knows? The, I'm not going to say they'll beat Saints. I think it's unlikely, but, you know, they've got a good setup. Why not? 
could could so really they'll, be, they'll be well up for it, especially at yeah. home. They'll be well up for it. Definitely. Uh, right on to this Sunday, Salford Catalans. Now that was close. Sixteen close. fourteen that finished. Um, yeah. Again, I've only seen the highlights of it, but apparently um, Catalans not knocked on or something just before it. I, th- I think I've seen someone say, um, and then uh, Salford ended up go- going in and getting the win. Yeah, some something like that. I think Salford, that's an impressive victory. And obviously, we've started the season pretty well, but you, the home form's not been great. So, the pick up win against Catalan is very impressive. But um, I, don't, I don't know how you pronounce his name still. I think it's Adam Kieran, Kieran, something like that. Um, he he missed the conversion with 10 seconds to go, which oh, really right, realized yeah. I think that I think that's what my mate was saying, not knocking on his miss. Yeah. Missed it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. I think, um, I think yeah. if he, <laughs> Sorry, go on. If he'd got that, I, I think Catalan probably would have would been. I think they nicked it to be fair in Golden Point because Sneed's good, Croft's good, but I think Catalan just in them sort of positions have got got what got the experience of big game players that can just edge it and give Catalan that win. Oh, definitely. Well, when they when they, when they're good, Catalans they're on fire. When the when the when the poor, they the, they make the yeah. They're all yeah. they're all over the place, aren't they? They don't look like Catalans because they're, they're they're so well constructed. They play. Yeah. They try and play like the Warrington game the other week. We said it was like it had an international feel to it, or what should we say that NRL the, the big fast pace straight from the start. Uh, yeah, yeah. They, they off the off the pace at Salford. Off the pace. Yeah. Um, on to you, you. You was pleased with this one, FC. Was yeah. It 20, Twenty points to fourteen against the Giants. Very impressive at, at home. Yeah. yeah. You were buzzing with that one, weren't you? Absolutely. You know, I think. The last few weeks, our defence has been terrible. Woeful. Like, woeful. Like, you, we didn't even look close in the games. But I said, um, I was at Leeds Hull last week, I said in the second half, we looked better. We 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 converted the chance that we had in attack. The defence was still quite poor. Um, but we were taking the chance in attack and throwing it around a bit. And I think that's what we did against Huddersfield. We, we really tried. And you can't doubt from the effort yesterday, which is something we haven't really said for much of a season. And um, David Litton, he's incredible. I think I saw someone say on Twitter that uh, have Hull found the next Sam Tompkins in David Litton, which I, <laughs> maybe maybe not sure about that just yet. But he he's always up there with effort, and mm. he he's got the skill that that Hull need. And I think I think he scored yesterday, not one hundred percent, but he's he really really turned up for for Hull, and little things like that got, gave him the edge. I know you got two wins at the start of the season, and you was probably thinking, "Oh yeah, we could, could be, could be all right." And it's gone in yeah. a bit of a slide now. But yesterday, do you think that's going to be a turning point now for you? I would say it's going to stop the slide, the the just endless losing, no confidence. But um, I don't think we're going to be straight back up there. Uh, we've got Wigan next, which I'll be at, and I, I don't don't think we're quite at the level to be beating them. I don't, I don't think many sides are. Um, but then we've got we've got a few good games. We've got Wakefield, we've got Lee, two I would like to say winnable games. Salford, arguably, is an alright game. So I think I think there's definitely potential now to turn it around in the next few games, but I'm I'm not gonna say it's a turning point just yet. When would you be I, I mean I feel that it's it, there's not gonna be no relegation battle. I said this pretty much at yeah. the start of the season. But when as a from a fan's perspective, when would you feel safe? Because you're 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 the next. Te- I know there's Castleford right there as well, but you're yeah. the next team to Wakefield, aren't you? So I would say I think we have Wakefield in two rounds, win yeah. that, and we safe. I'd say I, I, yeah. I think I can see Wakefield always seem to sneak away to get points when you don't really expect them to. And credit to them, they didn't get absolutely thumped by Wigan yesterday, so maybe that's a good sign for them. Um, but I'd say I'd say win against Wakefield, then that is safety. Yeah, don't jinx it for yourself, Jordan, because no, you'll be ba- you, we'll be back we'll be back on in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, and you'll be fuming with yourself if if we yeah. lose to Whitfield. I'm not sure I'm doing one that week. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the, the Wigan Wakefield game. Wigan don't look like they're going to be. I know they had that blip against Catalans, but they don't really look like they're going to be beat at the minute, do they? They've been no. absolutely rock solid. Absolutely, just on fire. You know, everything's going for them. Um, I think I think Liam Marshall deserves a lot of credit in particular as one of our key players. Getting the derby 
for example, and he's kept, he seemed to keep that form over the last few weeks, and he's uh, been really good. I mean, as well as attack, obviously, that's maybe, maybe well, it's not maybe the key thing in in rugby, but as well as the attack, the defence is very strong, very solid. It doesn't seem like breaking at really any point either, which is what you need. Yeah, he's not one of them wingers that can just attack. No, he can do he is, much everything. He's solid on the line. Yeah, he will drag you out. In, 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 he's one of them as well, Marshall. He won't rely on a three-man tackle. If he can get you out by himself, he'll get you out by himself over that yeah. time. He's always is he built bigger as well. Always a good aspect to have uh, having big players like that. But he's still got the oh, pace yeah. and everything. So oh, pace to burn. Yeah, exactly what you need. Well, Wakefield finally got some points on the board. Anyway, they got to try. So yeah, big up, big up uh, to Wakefield. That's what's up. 53, yeah. 53 points now. What is going on? Yeah, I think. I mean, Wakefield just... have been have been bad of sort over the years, and they've always been at the bottom or there or thereabouts. But this year, it's, there's nothing. They're just not there, are they? they, they, they no. If they played like that in the Championship, they'd get hammered every week. You watch quite a bit of Championship, don't you? And yeah. especially at the top, especially at the top level, these boys are pretty much full time, or or they, they they live and breathe it. Do you know what I mean? Even if they yeah. do only train twice, three times a week. Um, yeah, I really don't know what's going on there. Um, the gaffer's saying he's taking sole responsibility. The blame's got to lie with the players. I said this the other day on Twitter. Yeah, the blame's to. got to lie with the playing staff. Um, yeah. None of them look bothered. None of them look bothered. Yeah, I can, I think it's players like uh, Proctor who's come over, you know, these big names. Mm. I, haven't had his, I haven't heard his name mentioned once this season. What, no, you're right, yeah. It's, yeah and, spot on. He's, he's he should be the one of them leaders that is leading him around the park and you know being one of the standouts in not just Wakefield but arguably Super League and he's he's not then we mentioned it as well Mason Lino he's just not been I think it's it's easy for us to say he's not being used in the right way but he's just he's nowhere near as involved as he should be and he has been over the last few seasons which made him be a bit of a standout and I can I can say after watching Halifax Wakefield uh, Halifax Bradford I can easily say Halifax would do better than then oh, yeah. oh, definitely. Sure. oh yeah, too right. Embarrassing for them. <laughs> right, let's not um, keep on at Wakefield now. If any Wakefield fans are watching, yeah. they, they would probably yeah. be uh, giving us uh, negative comments. <laughs> yeah. But um, in all seriousness, no, nobody likes to see a club get hammered every week. So um, yeah, that is it's true. like when Lee, it's like when Lee was in Super League the other year. You're always sort of hoping they're always the underdogs. Everyone wants an underdog to win. Every everybody wants to. You know yeah. what I mean? Everybody wants. Um, Battler versus Keithler. Um, yeah. I didn't. I didn't catch any of that. I've watched a couple of the tries, but uh, I always love going to Battler. Have you ever been? I've not. I've not. Oh, you want to get there, Mount Pleasant? It's. I think it's the oldest rugby league ground. Yeah, that's still that's still in existence. Um, the views are unreal. Yeah, it's just I, was, I think it I think it's everyone's favourite away. It's definitely mine. It's it's I've seen it obviously a lot on the uh, TV and uh, highlight stuff, and it does look quality. But no, I've not got the chance to be in yet. But who knows if if Batley make it through the cup again? Who knows? Maybe might get to go. But um, who knows? They do have Hulk Arvo, so I'm not not too confident for him. But um. Yeah, I think I think it's also that that sort of presence of pitch being like slanted is it's almost mind games with teams in it a bit. Yeah, Eiffel, who are not used to playing there, having only just come up, that I'd, I'd probably cost them a little bit. Just just the idea of that is a bit costly for them. It always is when we go there with Swinton, um, but Swinton beat them there this season. Yeah, that. So. <laughs> Oh, we was all absolutely over the moon with it. It was the first yeah. time, I think it was the first time in like five years that I didn't go to Batley on an away day as well and we fucking beat them. I was gutted. It's typical, isn't it? It's, it's yeah. always happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the last result was London against Jewsbury. I didn't watch any of that game, but uh, I'm glad to see that London have uh, started to turn a corner again last season. Yeah. It was dismal. They went part-time. But they're at Wimbledon. They're tr- tr- at least they're trying to do something. They're linking up with the football club. They're getting yeah. the uh, results on the board. We need hmm. we need to see a bit of expansion, don't we, Jordan? We can't just all have it up uh, yeah. on the M62 <laughs> corridor. Yeah, the M62 is going to do not a right a lot for expanding the game. As much as much as we can try push it, it's not going to be a national game if we keep around here. But um, yeah, L- London. It's it is good to see them turn around a bit. When we went to part time and got. 
Although I, I say moved out of, Ely, of the Ealing Trail Finders, I would say arguably they've got a bit of a better stadium now. It's quite a quite a tidy little stadium, but it did really look like they were all uh, it's all it were all going quite wrong. And um, I think the head coach left last year as well, if I'm, if I'm not wrong. And he he seemed to be doing not not terrible for for his like for first job. So it, it just all seems to be going wrong. So it is it is good that they're starting to turn it around a little bit now. It is indeed. Right, let's look forward to this week. So there's no Super League this week, no Challenge Cup, no Championship, nothing there than that. We have yeah. England in international with yeah. both men and women's at Warrington. Um, what did you think to the to the squad that is picked? There's, there's, one, um, there's, one or two, there's one or two that's been left out that I thought, oh, maybe they deserve the shot this time. I think... I think it's uh, it's a bit it's given players chances, which is good. But I, I would agree there's definitely some players. Uh, Josh Charnley immediately, for example, mm. how is he not in yeah, there? That, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's it's, that's one that's mind boggling. Yeah, it's just he's probably been the best winger this season so far, and he's not in there. It just it doesn't make sense. But it was good to see players given chances. You, you got Jordan Abdul, who we, we mentioned a few weeks ago. It'd be good to see him link up and um, Jez Litton, the whole KR players that deserve to be in there uh, in there. But um, obviously, fourteen players have dropped out today. So, who who knows? Oh, fourteen of. Yeah, I think Jordan Abdul was one of them actually. But um, fourteen out of a forty oh, train. I'll, I'll have to look at that update. Oh, that's a bit unfortunate. And apparently, France are going to have a week inside. So, I'm trying yeah. to hype it up here, and then, and now I feel like I should be watering it down. Does it? It's. <laughs> It is a bit. It's just I don't. It doesn't make sense. If you, if you, I feel like if you if you got into that forty man squad, you should be made not necessarily obviously not necessarily guaranteed to be picked, but you should be made to act, like fulfil your position because just it's it's the international game needs to be grown. It's stuff like this is not going to grow the game because no offense to France, but we don't really want to see England play a much weaker France side and well win quite comfortably. It's not going to push the game and it he's a bit of a far sometimes now it is i mean you look at the rugby union international scene the six the, everybody loves the six nations i mean yeah. if, if we had something like that in rugby and I, I, I know scotland and ireland are on the same level but so what you, yeah. you need to you need to constantly play games against each other so we, so it's not we, we used to play against ireland and stuff all the time and the results the results weren't that the results weren't that wide yeah, obviously I'm, England. England naturally have got the better players because of the number. There's a bigger pool to select from, and when you've got the, the likes of Saints Academy and stuff, you're yeah. always going to be stronger than the, the other host nations. Um, but on the on another on another on another note, I would like to see them have this um, potential. Is it a tour of Tonga or a, te a test of Tonga coming over here? I don't know yeah, which, which, I which way it's going to work, but I'd, 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 that's that's the type of stuff that I want to see. Yeah, that's definitely that's the sort of stuff that'll push the game forward. Get, mm -hmm. Getting the internationals, like as much as I don't necessarily agree with this international, you need to get the players playing, get these internationals going. The more internationals we've got, the more the game will grow. Um, but he's he just making sure it's the right sort of stuff, like the Samoa tour, the Tonga tour, stuff like that. It is yeah. that that's the stuff that we need, not necessarily like England versus Combined Nations. Stuff like that is not necessarily going to really push the international game to where it needs to be. No, not at all. Um, I'm going to be away for the weekend, so I won't be there. You're not going to be there either, are you? Not this weekend, no. But we will we we will be watching, won't we? Um, yeah, and then we'll we'll talk we'll talk about that the following week, and we will preview those fixtures ahead yeah. as well. Um, <laughs> just just what I say, guys, before I go, um, we are linking up, collaborating with a sponsor. It's called Hez Hez Boxing Equipment, and for every purchase that you make, twenty percent of all profits go back to a boxing gym of your choice. Um, we'll let you know a bit about bit more about that over the next week or so but look out for that um anything you want to add jordan um not really apart from i'll be at two games a week after the week after the international I'll be at Hull Wigan, leeds salford so uh yeah content will be back up for the rugby league side of stuff very soon but, that's brilliant yeah. that's brilliant mate yeah okay <laughs> all right and cheers everyone for watching cheers everyone bye